So here we are taking seven days to review seven different mind mapping tools. MindJet. I spent a whole day with this thing, so sit back, relax, and let's do it. Hey everyone, Kevin Oxen here, and today what we're going to talk about is MindJet. It's a big program. It's a really robust program. I want to get in. I'm going to try and be as quick as I can. So let's get in and start rolling. Now, to give you an idea what MindJet is all about, let's have a quick look. It's good. MindJet's really good because it's available on the big three. It's available on your desktop. You can download it and install it. It's also available on the web. So if you're not at home, if you're not at work, you can log in from wherever you are on it with the browser and update your mind map. The last thing is it also has mobile access. So because everything works nicely together, it's a very powerful program. They've got three different pricing levels. The individual is $15 a month, but no teams. So it's got a, an okay price, but you can't collaborate with it. The business has everything. It's 30 bucks a month, and you can collaborate, do whatever else you want. And the third option is you can't download it. You can't use the, the desktop application, which is you know the most powerful part of it. But you can you can have teams. It would have been nice if they would have had just a small free version so people could try it out for longer than the 30-day period. But really, they're after the corporate market. So this may or may not be for you. But let's talk about it a little bit more, okay? Um, now, just before we get into this, I want to talk a little bit about who I am and give you an idea of how, why you should, you should be trusting me. I, I've been using mind maps for about seven years now. I've used tons. I've tried several different mind mapping solutions. I think after that amount of time, I've just figured out what I like and what I don't like. So I'm going to give you my personal opinions, things that I've liked based on what I've used and based on things that I know are going to be important for the average person who are going to be using mind maps going forward. Now, let's get into what we're talking about with MindJet. Some of the things I liked, some of the best things I liked about this, was that it's got Microsoft Office integration. Obviously, that's a good thing. It's also got the desktop, the web, and the phone. And a lot of the mind mapping programs out there right now don't have that. So this is a nice part of it where you can actually go wherever you want. If you're on your phone, you can check out what you've already put down. You can add and update your mind map. And when you get home, boom, it's all there for you. You're not sitting there trying to import and export and you can't do this. I've got to log in with a browser. It's just... It just, it's there and it works. That's really, really cool. The other thing, of course, that what they pride themselves on with the MindJet people is that they have good collaboration. You can do things like assign tasks to team members. It's a good collaborative team environment. So it's, it is a good thing. Another thing I like is that MindJet has real-time Gantt charts. Now, they're not the only ones, but let me give you an idea. I didn't set up a Gantt chart, but if you know what a Gantt chart really is, what it's going to have is it's going to have your tasks on the left-hand side, and it's going to have little bars showing how long it takes to complete a certain task. So what you can do is you can visually see how tasks are going to interact and which ones need to be done before other tasks. And so it's, it's a nice little feature to have, and it's definitely really nice to have if you're doing um, some kind of project management. So good idea there. Based on that too, as far as projects go, it does integrate into MS Projects and SharePoint. So you can get a lot of the work done, which I love doing, get a lot of the work done in a nice, neat mind map, and then you can export it off to a different project software if you have to have more, a bit more planning done. Let's talk about a couple of things that I'm not as huge a fan of right now. When I installed the desktop version on my PC, I was like, oh my goodness, this is crazy stuff. They, I had to do this whole big install process and I don't know, it seemed like it was a bit, bit much for what I was getting in, in the end result. Uh, the insert key to add a child node, uh, it was weird because on my laptop, I, they want you to use insert, but then for me to do that on the laptop, the keyboard I have, I had to turn off the number lock, and it, it just wasn't that nice to me. I'm not really a fan of the setup, and yeah, you can use control enter to add a new node, and I don't know, I wasn't quite feeling that. I'm not a fan also of the idea of clicking and typing anywhere, or left clicking and having a floating topic because I feel like left click should be a safe click for me. I should be able to just click wherever I want and left click should get me out of danger. But instead I've got this box following me everywhere I go when I'm left clicking and it, I, I'm not a fan of that. Now going hand in hand with that is the fact that it's right clicking that lets you drag and drop the map. And to me, that doesn't seem as intuitive. Right clicking, I don't know. It's not the first thing I would think of when I'm trying to drag and drop a map. And the downside is if I want to drag a map and I accidentally sit here and right click and then I let it go. Oh, now I've got the context menu. Now I've got a left click to get out of that. Oh no, no. Cause now I've got the box. Now I'll right click. Oh, okay. Back and forth. And I just want somewhere I can be safe and click something where I can have a look at my mind map and, and not have things happening. I know I know I can click on a box, but I'm like, 
I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of that. Here's another question. If it's linked up with Office, why doesn't it use all the Office shortcuts? Some of the shortcuts just seem off to me. And I thought if it's going to have this Office integration, that I would be able to use all my favorite Office shortcuts and have fun with it. In any case, uh, the last thing I thought that I wasn't a fan of was the fact that whenever I opened a web link, it opened in Internet Explorer. And yeah, I can probably go in and change that in the settings, but why doesn't it just use my default browser? I haven't used Internet Explorer in a long time. And so I would expect any program that I'm asking to open a link to open it in Chrome or you know whatever other browser that I'm choosing to use as my default browser. So there you go. A couple of things I thought were maybe not as strong in this particular program. Now, some of the overall impressions and thoughts that I had, I can tell by looking at this that it's designed for big corporations by having all this collaboration, all these other options baked in. The difficulty I find is that they've got so much in here that it makes the it makes it seem kind of kind of heavy to me. I feel like there's a lot of stuff in there that the average person's never going to use, but it's it's all on there. I kind of felt like I was signing my my computer over to the Mindjet people when I was installing this thing on my computer, and I don't know. I, I just it, it felt like it was a bit too much for what ninety ninety nine point nine percent of the people are going to use out there. And for me, it wasn't completely intuitive. It's definitely a very robust system. It's got a lot of options. It collaborates well. It goes well with Microsoft Office. It it can connect with different programs so they've done a good job making things sure things work the other great thing that i didn't type in here but it's amazing is that you can use it on the web on the desktop and on your phone which is huge that's the one of the biggest things i'm always looking for it's certainly a very powerful program and those are my thoughts after using it for a day